So we've got the trap doors back on, which is nice. Um, put a new bracket in the corner underneath this one and this one and remade a new, this one was completely loose. I don't remember how it was on before. I made a whole new, that white bit's all new. New surround there to hold that in place. So, the floor's back on, it's stable again. So I'm gonna continue modeling the forward bulkheads, the position of them, and the layout of the front of the cabin. So, spent a bit of time yesterday and this morning doing some model making, um, only because I actually have the boat. I can do it on a scale of one-to-one, -one, which is quite nice. I used to, with the ukulele, I spent a lot of time doing drawings and uh, then making cardboard models and CAD models. Uh, on this boat, I don't need to do the CAD and the cardboard, I realise, because I can um, actually make it. So there's been loads of materials and my neighbour next door helped me find and source loads of free ply. I've got loads and loads of it, um, which is cool. So I just thought, this was my original idea for the sofa. And it's sort of, I know, the chart table would be lower than that. That was my first attempt. But basically, yeah, it sort of would you know, be like a diner saloon down that area um, and the idea being I've raised it all up off the floor so you can see out the windows but by doing that it's really been really worthwhile making this model um, because it's basically not right I mean it's I don't know I mean I'll show it to Kel and it's what I'd envisaged but it just means you lose 40 centimeters of the room I mean it was all gonna be extra storage I was thinking that's good you know we could do loads of things behind there but I think the, the the gain in visibility and storage is not worth the loss in sort of feeling like this, you know, I'm sure you use both hands, but you know, I'll do it again. <laughs> feeling like this. Because one of the things we love about this boat is how big and open this area is. And I think if we close it off, it's gonna lose that charm. And if we want a view, we can always go topside. I think if Kelly here was here too, she'd say the same thing. But I'm gonna keep playing around with my models, having some fun and then uh, see where we get to. Today I've been prototyping the bathroom and uh, here it is, it's a rough idea. So the bathroom's moving a bit, the wall's coming back to our bigger forward cabin. And there's a bit of shape in it in the minute which you may not be able to do, depends on limitations, but you go in, the shower on the left, the toilet will be there, the sink will be there, that wall won't be quite there. You go down the corridor, there'll be a door on this here somewhere, and that'll be one bedroom for the kids, with the bank, bank going through the wall, and go down. In the bedroom. Then, yeah, forward, cabin will start here instead on this wall. Effectively, it's going to be quite a bit bigger. So, this is a bit I'm quite nervous about, but enough's enough, I've got to get on and do it. Uh, these bulkheads, these walls, the glass in, uh, completely joined to the hole. Um, but the surveyor said I can move them. Uh, the guy on site I chatted to about this also said we can move them, so I've got to get on and move them, which means uh, cutting into stuff which is structural now. Uh... All right, so I'm just chatting to Kelly on a, on FaceTime here. Hi. Um, just been spending a lot of time the last few days trying to work out all the systems on board, how they all work. Uh, and at the moment I'm investigating the anchor windlass and the high, which is hydraulic, the hydraulic windlass for the anchor and the hydraulic valve thrust, which was from the same company called Torquemaster, uh, which I've found online. And I was just about to email them looking through and I thought, maybe there's already some instructions or manuals on the boat for some of the equipment on board. And I thought, well, there was a huge amount of paperwork we were given, which I've never once opened. So after six weeks, well, five weeks or four weeks, however long it's been. So they thought maybe I should look at the manuals. And I've just dug these out of the chart table. So there's uh, there's quite a lot of paperwork there. So like me and Kelly, we do all this investigating, wondering about the history of the boat, thinking to ourselves, oh, where this come from? It might be. There might be one or two bits of information in this. Quite useful. Even I think that folder is actually called Esperance Instructions. What do you think? We're uh? losers. We're just such losers. Well, it's just typical, isn't it? Like, just start ripping the <laughs> boat, boat apart, but don't bother looking to see like any instructions. Maybe there's like an instruction that says, says, whatever you do, don't rip yeah. out the front cabin. Don't rip out the bow cabin, yeah. 
It's probably in there. It says, whatever you do, the boat will sink. Just don't do that. Right, so I'm going to start working through some of this stuff. That is a big pile of stuff. Cool, right, I'm going to take that back. I would take it back to my dining table, but the dining table is going to fall over because it's not, because I ripped it apart and it's not very balanced. So I'm probably about a quarter of the way through that massive stash of paperwork. And it's just really sad. Like, it's not sad, but like, so the, the two chaps who had the boat for us uh, met one of them and become a friend with the other one on Facebook and they're, they're lovely. And it's just really sad because they didn't finish the dream, you know what I mean? They got so close, they fitted out so much of the boat, new engine in, new rigging, new sail, uh, new electronics, all this stuff, they invested so much. And it's just, I've just seen the massive pile of receipts from the last five years and it's just like the last 10, 15 years. And they spent so much money. And like, even just like down to the thousands of pounds they spent on the old engine before they gave up on it and then bought the new engine and all the receipts are there. And it's just like, wow. And it's just really sad. They never quite finished the fit out and never got off on their world adventure. And you know, the owners before that were the same and the same. It's just this boat just got its history of uh, never quite achieving their dream of going. And it's really sad. It makes me really emotional, so. And I think that's why they sold it to us in the end. Because, um, you know, we pushed them on price, but they were just happy to see it go to a family and to people who were passionate and were falling in love with the boat and who wanted to finish her off and get her right and go and sort of see the world, you know, which is what we're going to do. It's like adds to the pressure, you know, seeing where they struggled in the past. And the thing is, they just, I think things just went wrong in their relationship at the end, unfortunately. Uh, their personal lives or whatever didn't match up to the big dream and for what Esperance was for, but yeah, they put so much time and energy and love and finance into Esperance. Um, and it's meant we've got an amazing boat, you know, the engine is just tops, you know, basically new. The Jenna was only a few years old, great condition, big powerful sail, new rigging, new electronics. So, you know, the bow thrusters, the hydraulic windlass, all this stuff, it's just great. So it's like, we've got a brilliant boat here. We just got to do it justice, get it finished, get it comfortable. And uh, yeah, have the best adventure ever.